All right, so we begin, begin. Thank you for joining me again this evening. Uh, we're going to begin with spiritual mind treatment. So if you would join me with a big deep breath. Oh, yeah. Knowing that the presence and the power of the one dwells in through and as all things. That is an absolute. That is the truth that we acknowledge and, and seek always to understand about life. That, that, that creative force, that energy, that presence is always in us, moving through us. It is who and what we are. And in this moment, we recognize that at the point of each of us and far, far beyond, seeing that the creative energy of life is what keeps the cosmos intact. It's what causes the cosmic activity of orbits and revolutions and expansion to continue. And so we continue our expansion by opening our minds and our hearts to the possibilities of our lives. We are integral in every way to the wholeness of the universe, and we accept our role and our place in all of that. And I know on this beautiful Monday evening that we have come together to stretch ourselves a little bit further, to know the truth with, uh, within us and about us a little bit deeper. And that through that, we become more fully present for living that prosperous life that is ours to live. And for all of this, I am deeply grateful. Grateful for each one who joins in this knowing, in this room and far beyond. And I accept that beautiful journey of awakening that we are on as sacred and holy. And certain that what I see and say in this moment is the truth of my being and of life itself. I simply let it be in gratitude and love, and invite us all to say together. And, and so, so it is. is. Yay! Good to see everybody. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad everybody's watching us online. Our, uh, our numbers, I got our numbers from Devon Embler this week on our, our uh, the numbers for the month of July. For the website. For the website. She keeps track of all that. And she sends it to me as soon as she, as soon as the month is over, and today's 1st of August, so she gave me the July numbers. We're up substantially. And I said, wow. I said, so what do you attribute that to? And she said, the prosperity class. <laughs> okay. So, you know, with those of us here, it's good to know that there are literally thousands of other people watching us online around the world. I used to kind of show off where those people were, and what happened was is that I, I uh, boasted about a Eastern European country at one point, and they vanished off of our list. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's like, don't talk about who's listening. <laughs> so I don't do that anymore. Anyone that can get the internet can watch it. No, no, it's not available in Chapel Hill. <laughs> Actually, we have, is it working? Everything working here? Okay, so we have, a, we have a YouTube channel. If you put Center for Spiritual Living Asheville, no, that's one way. Or you can go to the website, which is cslasheville.org. Either place, they're, they're easily displayed. And if you really want to be inspired, put in the words Barbara Waterhouse. and It'll blow your mind. Ah, so we're on this wonderful journey of expanding our consciousness around the concept of prosperity. And I, I, I guess you've noticed that this is way more like a workshop because I'm making you work as we do this. But I, I have my, my reasons. And as we continue to develop these different areas of focus, you're going to see how this all comes together before too awful long. Okay, so I'm calling tonight's class resources, and that's because we're going to talk about what it is that we have that's already working for us in the world. But before we do that, we're going to do this wonderful thing called a guided meditation. Yay. All right, and our meditation tonight, I'm calling, uh-huh, maybe I should turn it on, <laughs> mental clarity. Uh, amen, hallelujah. So uh, why don't you all just get comfortable and uh, the lights are going to go down.
I'm going to leave a little light up front here for me because I'm working off paper tonight. So I ask you to begin this process by being aware of the alignment of your body. Be aware that your head and your neck, your back, all the way down your spine, your pelvis, your arms and legs are all comfortably balanced so that you're not leaning to one side or the other and you feel that lightness of that balance. That's what we get from the idea of balance is a lightness, a gentleness that allows us to move forward with ease. Mm. If you haven't already, place your feet on the floor and let your eyelids gently close if you haven't done that. Allow your hands to rest on your legs or in your lap and bring your body to a state of stillness where the only thing that's going on is that you're breathing, your heart is beating, and the natural functioning of your body continues without you being required to do anything. Be as comfortable in that state as you can. Now be aware of your breath. Be aware of the air entering your nostrils with your intake. Feel the coolness of it. And at the top of that breath in, just hold it for just a moment and then gently release it. Be aware of the warmth of the breath as it leaves your body. Now be aware of that breath as it enters into your lungs and expands your chest. And how natural that is. How wonderful it is. And as you release, how it gently contracts, allowing you to feel the cadence of that in and out with that s just small moment of holding between the two. Move to your abdomen now and be aware that to some degree it expands with each breath as well. All the while allowing your breath to flow freely. It's a natural, wonderful process that is always happening in your body, in and out, in and out. And as you do this, be aware that your mind also is in a state of activity, thoughts passing through, thoughts about your breathing, thoughts about the temperatures you're feeling, perhaps thoughts about the day that's just passed or the night yet to come. Perhaps your thoughts are even bigger than that. Maybe there's something on your mind, on your heart right now that is of concern. And if you can, just for the moment, let that pass as well. Just observe the activity of how you almost always have some thought in mind, just passing through. And as you do this, notice if your mind wants to follow the thoughts, to add to the thoughts, to expand on an awareness of the thoughts or just let them come and go. If your mind wants to expand on them, you'll realize that you're recalling more details, more activity, more perceptions. 
And if that's happening right now, just be aware of it. Don't make it right or wrong. Just let it be okay. Whatever your thoughts may be, whether they're about the past or the future, whether they're judgments or opinions or observations or desires, just be aware of how your mind is orchestrating them. It's almost as though your mind has a mind of its own. But the only task you have right now is to let these thoughts come and go. And as you witness each one coming into your awareness, simply observe them as though they are a separate entity or event from you. You're simply the observer. And this is simply a piece of consciousness within your mind. Nothing is right or wrong, it just is. Notice for a moment how thoughts have beginnings and middles and ends. They come in, we observe them or we oftentimes engage them. And as we feel like we've had enough, they gently slip away. If you find yourself being drawn into any of these thoughts by engaging them or reacting to them, realize that you are no longer the observer. Engaging them immerses you in the activity of those thoughts and often causes an emotional reaction to, to arise. If it's something you'd rather not have happen, you may become concerned or even afraid, frustrated, confused. And if it's a thought of something lovely and wonderful that could happen or has happened, Notice how it lightens everything. This is the dance we do with what goes on in our minds. We can always come back to that neutral place by observing our breath. When our thoughts are strong, we get caught up in them. When our thoughts are fleeting, we almost don't notice they're there. But your breath is always your anchor. And there's always the present moment that allows us to release whatever has happened or whatever could happen and be present in the now moment. Many times there are emotions that are attached to those thoughts. They're not wrong or bad. We're allowed to feel whatever we'd like. But what we often forget is that we're in charge of our emotions and we get to pick them. If we let our reactive mind choose our emotions, we think that they're forced upon us. But this is never the case. They are always at a point of choice. We get to say yes or no. We get to say this emotion rather than that one. We are the great moderator our, of our emotional state. Emotions are a field of energy that surround our body. They move through the portals of our energy field and our, our energy centers. With this energy field, I invite you in this moment to be aware 
of the size of the energy field around your body. Is it just an inch or two outside of your skin? Or is it feet away, expanding, even filling the room? Just be aware of it. And when you have a sense of that, I invite you to expand your energy field to fill this room. Recognizing that you are going to be blending your energies with everyone else, wherever you are. Be aware of how different that feels. Not really good or bad, just different. And when you're ready, move the size of your energy field back in, contract it back to where it's just a couple of inches outside of your body. Releasing all of the connection you have with all this other energy. You are absolutely in charge of the emotional energy that dwells in that field. You are able to generate it with your conscious understanding that it exists. You can feel, fill it with any level of energy you choose. Emotions or energy. They just vibrate differently. That's the only difference. So, containing your energy field, being aware of what your energy state is, allow it to speed up a bit, meaning that it will lighten. Feel how that changes your awareness of what's going on around you. Perhaps you almost feel like you're floating. It feels so light and beautiful. This kind of energy can generate from your crown, from your heart, from your throat, from your third eye, from your solar plexus. Light, beautiful, wonderful energy. And if you choose, you can slow your energy back down a bit, putting it maybe back where it was if that feels right. And just be with that idea that this is yours to control. This is yours to create. There's no reason to judge the state of your energy field simply to use it. Allow it to make your life richer and fuller and more prosperous. Emotions only have energy or have some kind of say over us if we allow them to. Otherwise, they have no power. The truth is, is that you are way more powerful than any, any emotion, any energy on the planet. Whenever your emotional state feels too intense, simply return your attention to your breath 
and allow the energy to diffuse. Using this natural flow nourishes your body and opens you to the truth of your very being. Allow your breath to be your focus in this moment. Allow it to help you navigate through moments of stress and difficulty. Your breath will always bring you back into balance wherever you are and with whatever is going on. Within you, there is always a boundless source of peace, kindness, and understanding. Allow yourself to be filled with the nourishing energy of your breath. Allow yourself to be in a state of loving kindness as you know these things about yourself. You always support and love yourself, no matter what thoughts come into your mind. You are always safe and in charge of all that you think, say, and do. You are healthy and strong in spirit, in mind, and in body. Your life is filled with experiences that are joyous and valuable. You are a radiant being of loving kindness. You have at your beck and call all the happiness that anyone could ever desire. It's your choice. And now as you allow the benefits of this practice to flow into your entire experience, begin to gently return your attention to your breath. And now to your entire body. And as you're ready, begin by simply moving a finger or a toe. Then perhaps a hand or a foot. Recognize that wonderful balance that you've been experiencing this entire time. Allow it to stay. You are balanced in every way. So take a a long, deep breath, and as you breathe that breath out, move your neck slightly from side to side, and perhaps your shoulders with a gentle circular motion. And when you're ready, open your eyes with a big smile, recognizing that your heart is filled with gratitude. Your life is good. Your life is God, now and always. And so it is. Namaste. Mm. Boy, the energy in here was delightful for that. Thank you so much. Okay, we can bring it up a little bit. Just one, just one. Mm. Okay. Would you let your eyes adjust? We'll leave it there for a couple minutes. Everybody good? Mm -hmm. All right, fantastic. That was fun. Mm. So where are we tonight? Tonight, I know. I would like for us to start with a, a few more uh, statements of purpose. Let's see, is that what it's going to say? Yeah, power of purpose. So weeks ago, you took on the assignment of memorizing a statement knowing that always our statement of purpose is in flux, is an organic experience, and that the, thing, the way to engage it and to integrate it is to know it at any moment, under any circumstance. So 
who has not shared their statement of purpose that would be willing to do that? Great, Kristen. Uh, we're going to do it a little different tonight. I want you on camera for the good people that are watching at home. So, Kristen, this, uh, this mic awaits you. Are we on camera here? Okay, what are we going to have to do to be on camera here? I did not work this out with my text. How about right here? Okay. There you go, front and center as it is. I'm going to get out of your way here. There you go. Hello. Hello. My purpose is to enrich and nurture all beings, including four-legged, furry ones, feathered ones, through my love and connection. Very nice. Very nice. I don't know that I want to know about those feathered four-legged. <laughs> But that was beautiful. There you go. Well, that was beautiful. Who else wants to come up and do that? Thank you, Lori. We need to do something different? Oh, uh, let's check the mic. Is it not on? I didn't hear it today. Let me give it again. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. She can go What do you think? No? Okay, we're having a little technical difficulty. Thank God we have an editor. Yeah, broken part. Oh, that's why you put that's why you put the tape on it. And yeah, I got it. Just just when we thought everything was working. Oh, that's definitely on now. So let's yeah. Uh, why don't you come? Come do this, Lori, and then we'll have Kristen come. Okay. I think it's on. My purpose is to empower people to achieve optimal health and vitality through food and mindfulness. Beautiful. Oh. Very nice. Thank you. Kristen. Beautiful. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice. Who else wants to come up here and do this? Renee. Wonderful. Can I sure. Do whatever you want to do. <laughs> They're taller than I am. I can't. Okay, here we go. So my purpose is to live my life as fully as I can uh, with authenticity, with kindness, with generosity, and to inspire others to do the same. Very nice. I'll take that. I'll take that. Very nice. Do we have another volunteer? Surely there's one more in the room that's ready to do this. Okay. All right. I will not make any judgment on that. All things in perfect order. Well, you said once that hadn't done it yet. Well, yeah, that's what I meant. And I know there are a bunch in this room that haven't done it yet. <laughs> so if you haven't memorized it, that's still your task. Okay. You know, there's a, why don't I just get this off my chest? Um, it's true that people come to a class like this and they, they're engaged for the time they're actually in the room. And then many people just forget about it until the next week when they come back again. And if you do that, nothing sticks. Nothing stays. And the whole purpose of this class is to integrate these practices, these ideas into your life. Where we're going with all of this, all this work we're doing, all the stuff we're writing, your final assignment is going to be to go through that every single day, to read it to yourself every day. Because you don't know it, you don't have it memorized, you don't remember it at will. Because that's not normal. It takes time. And if you want to do that, then that's the way to do it, is to, to do it repetitively as a spiritual practice. And uh, Reverend Marsha has something she wants to say, so let's... Uh... All right, I got, I, got to, I got to pass out. Um, I had the opportunity, I think I was sitting at that table over there. Okay, some, some come on on to camera as long as you're going to be standing up class, here. And uh, 
thanks to John, I do have a memorized purpose statement. What I didn't create was a new one in the past three weeks. That's all right. So I just realized this is proof that it works. So I'm Marsha McLean, and my purpose is to teach, speak, write, sing, facilitate, and lead in the awakening of humanity to its spiritual magnificence, and I added two things, possibility and purpose. This stuff works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You added those two since we've done this yes. class? Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, with Kathy See? Ann Lewis. This has, has value to, for everyone. Fantastic. That's lovely. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. That feels great. That must have been what I was looking for. <laughs> All right. So that was, that was that step. We did the release, then we did purpose, and then we moved to core values. That's what we did last week. So what I asked you to do was figure out what are the highest values in your life? What are the things that are qualities of life that are most important to you and to prioritize them? And we were looking for eight to 12 different ideas. And you all did that priority, prioritizing work and came up with these, these key values. And the truth is that you have many, many, many more values in your life than that. These are just the ones that rise to the top, all right? And so with each of them, I asked you to come up with examples. Now, I, I suggested three, you know, but, uh, you know, to be honest, all of mine don't have three. I've got one that has just one statement that goes with it because it, that defines it, and that was impeccability. And to me, that's about being, when, uh, living a life where everything that I think, say, and do align. And that if what I'm thinking and what I'm speaking and what I'm doing in my life are the same thing, I'm living an impeccable life. And I had a conversation with Breezy about that. She likes the word integrity better than the word uh, impeccability, which is perfectly fine. That's another thing I really wanted to talk to you about. There were some people that were that came to me and said, I don't remember who it was at all, but people who said, you know, I... I, I I don't really like that word power. I don't use that word power because it makes me think of, of, of someone having power over. And then I don't even remember what they said, but there was some uh, um, dissonance with the word power, which, you know, is one of my key, key words, my key values. And what it made me realize was this exercise is not about my values in any way, shape, or form. Don't judge my values, and I won't judge yours. <laughs> It doesn't matter what my values are, and it doesn't matter to me what your values are as long as they're working for you. The thing is, know your, know your values. That's the idea here. That's the important thing. And if you know what is important in your life, then you're going to live up to that, and that's going to guide you and help you remember that's why you're here, to express these values all the time in everything you're doing. That's the work. And when you don't remember it, then you do all these other things that have nothing to do with, with living the life you've come to live. And you spend a lot of time doing stuff that just is pretty irrelevant to it all. Mm -hmm. So that's the key to this. Not about having any, any thoughts, or judgment's probably too strong a word, but anything going on in your life that would, would cause you to uh, have uh, some dissonance with something that has nothing to do with you. Don't worry about that. Let that go. It doesn't matter. That's not part of this process. The thing is, do you know yours? And are you living them? And you are. That's the cool thing about it. When you say uh, uh, honesty is a, is a core value in my life, chances are you can give me many examples of how that's showing up. And that was the point of the exercise. We're not trying to live up to something. We're not trying to make something happen. We're recognizing what's already there. And then going, yay, see, my life has meaning. My, I have a purpose. And that just generates so much sense self-awareness. That would be the point of doing all this. So don't worry about what mine are. But what I want to do is give each of you, and not each of you, but those of you that have the courage to come up and do this, to bring up just one of your core values and speak to how you defined it in those statements of every time, I, whatever, and share that. Now, I hadn't asked you to memorize them, so I'm not asking you to memorize them. What I am going to do, though, is ask you uh, to have the courage to share one in the room so that people can get an idea of how this works. And as we listen to that, don't, have it, don't care what the value is. See how it has been constructed in this person's mind 
so that they can use it to remember who they are and how they want to live their life. All right? So who wants to go first? Thank you very much. Love. I celebrate love everywhere. Every time I witness beauty, every time I meditate, every time I make a connection with another. Very nice. Beautiful. Let's give April a hand on that. Is this thing working? So, so all right. The light's red, so it means it's not. Then it is not. And we will not use that. We will use this one. <laughs> Which means I'm going to come around and hold it. Please don't grab this. <laughs> all right. Who else ha- would like to share one of their core values and their definition of it? Aha. Folks watching o- online, please forgive me. We're not, we're not doing this so you can see everything. <laughs> I am consistent every time I honor a commitment, every time I tell the truth, every time I treat others well. Wonderful, wonderful. Yay. (laughs) Benjamin Desraeli, the uh, prime minister in the uh, 19th century in uh, in England, uh, had had a statement um, that the way to, the path to success is through constancy of purpose. So you using the idea of being consistent is exactly that. When we are consistent, we are, we are on a path of success. That's what I have found in my life and many others. So good for you. That's a powerful one. It worked for me in sales. I'll bet, and you were incredibly successful in sales where you're not. I was. Yes, there you go. All right. Who else has one they'd like to share? Okay. I have integrity in everything I do, every time I hold my word, and every time I feel honest. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. Beautiful. All right. Understand that this is not uh, amplifying into the room, so you kind of have to speak to the room. This is just getting it on the video. Okay. Okay. Who else has one? Every time I put healthy food and thoughts in my body, I am living, living as an example of what I value most. So what's your value? Nutrition, food, wholeness. So what's your affirmation for nutrition? Um, that every time I put good food, good nutrients in my body, I exemplify health and wholeness. So your, your affirmation for nutrition could be something like, I fully engage in the principle of healthy nutrition every time. And then say those things that you said every time. But is, is this the one that you're working on right here? Oh, and you are, and that's why I'm offering Probably some a little guidance. No, 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 and I'm not reading what you've got, but see, you've got one here. Mm-hmm. That's where your affirmation goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then your affirmation is defined by those things that start with every time. Okay? okay. So you, you've got it. it you, what you said it in what you, in what you just said, but if, it would be clearer if you had that nutrition affirmation in the beginning and then said those statements of every time I. Okay? okay? okay. Very nice. Very nice. Did we acknowledge, uh, Lori? Yay. Very nice. Okay. Thank you. So my purpose is to show up, explore, and express freedom. And self-expression is a core value. Every time I am moved by the spirit to express, something new is expressed. Every time I play music, I express myself. Every time I show up authentically, I am expressed. Self-expression. Yes, self-expression. Again, same thing I just said to Lori, you don't have an affirmation, you have, you have a value. Right. Wonderful, to have, essential to have a value, right. but you want to make a statement of that self-expression. What is, what is self-expression? And then you demonstrate it every time, and then you've got your, your statements after that. Think about, think about structuring it that way, okay? Our techs are hard at work here. 
All right, well, I'm going to regain this one because who knows how well I'm doing it holding it on my hand. All right. Thank you for the, uh, uh, the support from the back of the room. Eh, it's just going to be there. I didn't wear a jacket tonight, and I'm paying the price. See, which one do I want to share? I live in gratitude. Every time I acknowledge the constant flow of blessings in my life, every time I recognize the value inherent in all the circumstances in my life, every time I express the fullness of life in what I think, say, and do, and every time I look into Barbara's eyes. Yeah. Right. Who's next? Who wants Me. to do one? Oh, yay. All right. <laughs> well, mine is gratitude. I am grateful for everything in my life. Every time I feel stuck with words, I'm grateful for recordings. <laughs> Give her a hand. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to do any coaching on that right now. <laughs> Who else wants to do one? Who should I call on? <laughs> An introvert for sure. Coming to you, Brian. You knew it was going to happen. All right, what do you got? Uh, mine's abundance. I am a demonstrating abundance in my life. Every time I circulate money, every time I trade stocks, Every time I share money, every time I give thanks. There you go. Fantastic. Beautiful. That's the work. Yeah, I think you guys have figured this out. This is great. Good work. Anybody else want to try it? Okay. All right. So those are, that's, that's the work we've come to to this point. The next thing we're going to work on is finding some more things that are going on in our consciousness that we can start crafting to work for us instead of being rambling things that keep us from, uh, from you know, how do I want to say this? Um, I have so many people over the years that have come to me and said, you know, I, I, I don't know why my life isn't working. I don't know why I have these, these problems, these challenges that keep showing up over and over in my life. Well, they don't know why because they don't know what's going on in their consciousness because there's all this activity that they're not acknowledging that is almost like invisible and, and silent to them, but it's there and it's directing their lives. And when people do that, they get the result of that and they go, why is this happening to me again? It's because of them. It's not something happening to them. It's happening because of them. They are creating it, and that's not a judgment. That's just a reality of how life works. So, and that's what we're doing here is we're crafting some ideas that break those habits and take us into a focus of something more powerful, more meaningful, and more valuable to us. That's the work that we're doing here. So the place that we go from here is into what I call a personal pledge. Personal pledge. What could that possibly be? Well, a personal pledge is making a statement that something has, that you're choosing to do something a different way. And this is actually done in stages. So the first thing I want you to think about tonight is if you look at your life, what is it with the high consciousness that you have that you realize is still not completely healed that is still something that comes up again and again and again that gets in your way. My personal one is self-judgment. Mm -hmm. I had for so much of my adult life, even after all my good work in Australia and coming into the science of mind, when I would do something that looked like a mistake, an error in judgment, uh, saying something that in, in the moment I said it, I realized I wish I hadn't said it. 
I had these words that would come out of my mouth like, you stupid idiot, you fool, you screw everything up. And it was like, who the hell is that? Well, my mother was rough on me, but she didn't say it that way. So I had to acquire that on my own. I decided that I wasn't good enough and that I was in this internal battle with all of these great things that I was learning and not being sure quite how to apply them because I was the one that messed everything up. Mm. Now that was mine. I'm not saying that's yours. Yours could look entirely differently. Yours could be in just from a whole different uh, point of view. Um, you could believe that you're unworthy. You could believe that, uh, that you don't have the skills or abilities to make your life work at that level. You could believe that there's some curse on you that has kept you from getting to where you want to go in your life. I'm making this stuff up. I don't know what your thing is. But there's something in your life, that, and you're aware of it, even if not, if not consciously, not at, not at the top of your understanding, there's something going on in your life that gets in your way that causes you to not have the outcomes you want, that, that lives in that place of doubt or fear or confusion, that still needs to be healed. So I have a formula for healing it. And it's called having a personal pledge. This is how the statement goes. I no longer indulge in the debilitating act of, I no longer indulge in the debilitating act of. This is a pledge to yourself that you will not do this anymore, this thing you've been doing. And it's an indulgence. You indulge yourself because it's your out. It's your way of saying, I couldn't help it. I'm a victim. That's the way I've always been. You know, what's, how, am I supposed to, how am I supposed to change the world? But it's not about the world. It's an indulgence. And even though it may seem abusive, it may seem incredibly critical, and it may seem like it's just an integrated part of your life that you would have no idea how to get rid of, you can because in the statement, you're saying, I no longer indulge in the debilitating act of. And the beauty of the way that's, that's uh, crafted is that it doesn't matter whether you decide that tonight or you decided it five years ago because you no longer do it. <coughs> okay? So what goes in your blank? I no longer indulge in the debilitating act of blank. Mine was self-judgment. I would not say that it never shows its ugly little face, but nowhere near it did before. Nowhere near. Let me tell you my story. I'm at a workshop where I learned this tool. And the facilitator says, get in groups of four. And this is what you're going to do. The person who is speaking, who is sharing their full statement, and we'll get to the whole statement here in a minute, but the, whoever's saying that reads that to the group. And the other three people in the circle go, no, nah, that's not true. No, nah, you can't do that. You can't live up to that. And in that moment, you take that on as that resistance inside of you, and you say, yes, I can. I can do this. I no longer do this. This is real for me. And I, I went into this statement saying that and having these people go, no, no, I, we don't believe you. No, nah, that's not true. And I stood up for myself. Until I broke into tears. And I was not a good member of the circle because once I had taken my turn, I had to leave. And this, this is how long ago this was. There were no cell phones. And I had to go find a pay phone in this conference center I was in and call my wife sobbing and telling her about this amazing breakthrough I just had. It changed my life. I no longer indulge in the debilitating act of self-judgment which in the past I used to 
excuse myself for my actions as though I were a lost cause. Instead, I realize the magnificence and beauty of my life right now and always. Right now and always. Always. Now, that's not your statement. Yeah. No, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to everybody. But that's the formula. And your task right now is to come up with a statement that fills in these blanks for you. You ready to go to work? All right. I have a question. Uh, <clears throat> what about the uh, conditioning or the thoughts or the uh, behaviors that you inherited as true and that you practiced as true because of your uh, religious upbringing or conditioning or something similar? Who's in charge of your life, you or something Maybe else? A priest. Your, your priest is in charge of your life? Well, back then, you know. You're screwed. Priest, <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> You're not. You're in I charge of your life. No priest is like in charge of your life. In there, no, well, space. that's where it started, but that's that's over tonight. That's yes. over tonight. Does thank God always raise the little head? If you want to keep it, you can keep it. You want to you want to you want to cut it off? You can cut it off. It has already been done, but you know sometimes you try not to not even. No, it. you're making excuses. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay, nobody raised their hand, although some people are still looking down in a very studious fashion. Okay. Do you have a statement you can work with? Yes. Okay. All right. So who wants to, uh, to, to go through this process with me, of sharing it with me? You want to do it, Jude? Come on up here. Bring it with you unless you... Oh, you got it on... Okay. Okay, this is you and me. So, what's your personal pledge? You can read it. I don't care about that. I no, I no longer indulge in the debilitating act of dissociation, which in the past I used to avoid experiencing my feelings. Instead, I experience the fullness of myself. Yeah, I don't know that that's true. I don't know that that's true. I'm not sure that you can do that. I'm not sure at all that you can do that. Convince me you can do that. I have come to know that that does not serve me anymore. So what's going to make you not do it anymore? I'm going to be more conscious of my feelings and when when are you going to do that now okay so you're not going to you you say I am now more conscious of my feelings and how they feel and I will not run away from them anymore okay maybe there's hope for you (laughs) thank you So who had a, uh, uh, an ex- transformative experience in that exercise? Anybody? Yeah, the problem is you're all too nice. <laughs> the idea was to get people to really convince you. And there was a lot of nice going on. There, there was some not nice going on, but that, it's not about that. It's about convincing yourself, really. I was talking with Judith while y'all were working, and she said that uh, she, that I scared her at first, <laughs> and then and then I said, "Yeah, but then you convinced me," and she said, "I convinced myself." That's the point. Yay. 
So did anyone here convince themselves that what you, what you have come up with as your pledge is real? So what do you think it's going to take for it to stick? Practice. You're going to have to read that statement to yourself a lot. You're going to have to remind yourself that you promised. You actually promised yourself. Everybody else here was just your witness. <laughs> you promised yourself. And if you just put it in the, in the binder and put it on the desk or in the drawer or in the trash can, then you didn't mean it. You were just faking so the question is, how important is this to you? Do you really want to move beyond that thing that was in your way, that indulgence, that thing that, you, uh, that you've used to not be responsible, to not have to do the work, to not have to make your life the way you know it can be? Or are you going to do it? That's the question. Only you can decide. And I guarantee you there are people in this room that will just leave it in the binder and forget about it. And they get nothing for that. But if you're willing to do this and make this work in your life, it will truly make a difference. It certainly has in mind. When Laurie asked me, D -d -d so your inner critic gone? It's largely gone. I very seldom have those thoughts. Does that mean I don't have missteps? Of course I have missteps all the time. And I just let it be part of my stride. And I ask for forgiveness and move on because that's the only way to do it that I know how to anymore because I'm not willing to, to make myself wrong when things don't go the way I think they should. And I'm not going to make anybody else wrong either. It's just the way it is and we're going to go from here. So whatever your statement was, it's important. I'll be right there. Whatever your statement was, somehow that was important enough for you. Now, I'm not telling you have to live with the words you wrote here tonight forever. You might want to adjust them. There may be an, an angle or a nuance to it that didn't occur to you tonight. And when you're reading it, if you're reading it all the time, change it. Make it more complete for you. Let all these things be organic. Let them be alive in you. But take the time to remember what you promised yourself on August 1st, 2022. It can change your life. Andrea. So I was amazed when I started Mm -hmm. for Your brain blank. went blank. The blank was blank. Yeah, so you're saying really good things. I want you to be able to say this okay. for the folks that are listening okay. online. So I was amazed at how my brain went blank for the first blank. And then I thought blank. And I went, okay, I've got to come up with a list. And you didn't offer us a list. So <laughs> I looked on my phone and looked up negative traits to brainstorm. And then I started brainstorming and I came up with like six words that kind of resonated and then I realized they all had a theme ah there you go they all had a theme and they all kind of like the other words we did they all fit in the same boat and once I had the boat then I could fill in the rest of the blanks good for you because I, I started going into for God's sake I'm a therapist I've done plenty of work on myself I'm willing to look at my own stuff. If you don't look at your own stuff, you get stuck with people. What the heck is my stuff? And, you know, and then, but I, I got there. And so if anyone is listening on the video and they don't know what their thing is, even though they're willing to look at it, I encourage you to look up the list, to look, look up online. And it gave me like 20 words. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's it. Okay, I, I can work with that. That's lovely. Yep. Right. That's brilliant. Anybody else have an aha thing that came out of this? It's funny because she said she had trouble filling in the first blank. She had trouble filling in the first blank. Yeah, but with me, it came right away. Yeah, I, it does. I knew some. right away what I've been working on. I've been working on it for a long time. And um, the thing is that it's good to get outside yourself take a look at it from a different angle, which is what I feel like I did tonight. And we have to share it with people. You know, it, it, it's got to get, get more real. Well, then being challenged about yeah. it and um, uh, 
recognizing that it's up to me that um, I've made the pledge to myself and when I make a commitment, I make a commitment. <laughs> so I have to follow through. I just have to follow through. Good for you. Lovely. Give her a hand. So look at this statement with me again. This is so, this is so genius. You've got a denial statement. I long, no longer indulge in the debilitating act of. That's your denial. I'm not doing this anymore. This is not part of my life anymore. I reject. I release. This is gone. Most people at that level don't really mean it. But when you put, in which in the, in the past I used to, oh, that's why I've got to do this. Because this makes my life suck in some way or another. This just, this just makes my life not work. It, it's, a, it's like having a brick wall in front of me. And I, and I am no longer willing to do it. Because that brick wall is just making my life unbearable at some level. And I'm tired of it, and I don't want to do it anymore. But even that's not enough. Instead I, you must fill in the blank of instead I. You must replace that thing with something better. Something that you can use to make your life work. Then you're really gotten somewhere. All of you want success, prosperity, abundance in your life. Something has, has not allowed you to feel fulfilled in that way. And again, this, 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 build, this, this class includes people who are millionaires. So that's not the issue. The issue is, how do you feel about yourself? How are you, how are you developing your life in a way that pleases you? And what are the roadblocks? This is about finding that big, big roadblock, knowing why it's a problem, Letting it go and saying, this is what exists in my life now. And if you can do that, you're cleaning up so much crud from the past and, and opening up to so much possibility. So continue to work on this statement. Don't just leave it in this binder either. All of you probably have computers. Type it up in your computer and print it out on pretty white paper so that it looks like it came out of a book, your book, the book of life, the, your book of life. That's what you want. You want it organized in such a way that it's easy to read, that there's nothing scratched out, there's nothing replaced. It, it reads as though it has been edited by the best editors in the world, which is you, to make this the story of your life. That's what you're working on here. That's what you're doing. What a concept. What a concept. Okay, we have one more task to at least begin tonight. Uh, and this one's a fun one. This one is just pure joy to me. What we're going to work on are life models. <laughs> there are people in your life that you adore, that you respect, that you deeply admire. And you could easily say, if my life was like their life, Man, I'd be on top of the world. There's people like that. Now, all those people are human beings going through all the experiences of unrealized expectations and things didn't work out and something else happened. But sometimes what we admire about somebody is that they went through the fire and came out the other side. One of my models actually didn't. At the end of a, an enormously successful career, his, his whole empire fell apart. But that takes nothing away from what he built. He built something that was so magnificent that everyone that knew him and most people on the planet did admired him for who he was. And I had the great pleasure of working for him. His name is Robert Schuller. Dr. Robert Schuller wrote many best-selling books. He built a thing called the Crystal Cathedral. Yeah. He, when he, in his youth, he wanted to be an architect. So he got to build this magnificent structure, which I stood on the stage and poured my heart out. Now, the room was empty when I did that. <laughs> but <laughs> didn't stop me from getting up there and doing it. And what he taught me was to create something out of nothing. Because he was just a guy. 
He had no history. He had no credentials. So, you know, he finally got his doctorate. But, you know, he started his ministry in a, in a drive-in theater in, in uh, Orange County, California. And he would set up these big micro, or, uh, speakers and speak from a microphone on top of the snack building. <laughs> and people would drive in the car and sit there and listen to him teach on Sunday morning. It was brilliant. And then they built a community church. It was called, uh, I forget what it was called, something community church. And then he had this dream of building this crystal cathedral, this multi-million dollar structure that you can see from all over Orange County. It's amazing. That and the tower that was built next to it, you can be anywhere around Disneyland. You can see it. There it is. It was brilliant. Now that, I don't even know if that ministry still exists, but in the days that it did, it touched a lot of lives around the world. It filled a lot of people with possibilities. And he was a brilliant teacher. You know? So I admire that. And even though, <laughs> you know, the story, you could say, ends with things kind of falling apart. Yes, he had, he had children that, that were so, had si- sibling rivalry. And they managed to kind of tear it apart. And so be it. But when it was on, it was on. You know? And he did that from nothing. I love that. I love that. I think that's why it's so important to me when I hear the numbers for our website that so many people go on there and listen to what what I teach, what Barbara's taught, and what we do here, what we believe, these principles. They're they're receiving them from nowhere. It's like just out of nowhere they get this information that can change their lives. That to me is creating something out of nothing. My other teachers were my first teacher, Ken Dyers, who taught me uh, how to be true to myself in finding my way in the world. For, to my Native American teacher, Will Rocking Bear, who taught me how to be impeccable. And to Gary Dahl. Anybody ever heard of Gary Dahl? The yes. pet rock guy. <laughs> the pet rock guy. Oh. For, and he taught me how to create great wealth with a simple idea. And to me, the science of mind is a simple idea. And I've created wealth in my life, enough that will certainly leave my heirs plenty of money to do with what they want because I can't possibly spend it all. Yay! Those are my models. Who are your models? So here's, here's the design. These are the models for my life. Whoever it is, you write their name down. And you say what it is they've taught you by being who they are in the world. You don't even have to know them. This could be somebody you never met. Somebody you admired from a distance. Could be a historical figure. You know, you want to do the Buddha Jesus thing? That's cool. That's fine. But how, what is it they modeled to you that makes your life better? And not just one, but several of these people. So... Really, we're just going to get started in this tonight, but sit with this tonight and see what goes in these blanks for you. And if nothing else, come up with your list of people. Mine are all men, my bad. (laughs) Thank you, I appreciate that. This turned out that way. You may wake up in the morning and a a name you hadn't even thought of tonight pops into your head. Somebody extraordinary that now you remember belongs on your list. That could happen. Let it be okay. You could put somebody on your list and next year decide they don't belong on your list. Take them off. Let this be a living, active experience for you. I had someone on my list I took off was Arnold Schwarzenegger. I was totally enthralled with his, I mean, he has DNA that, that makes it work, but with his discipline to be the amazing bodybuilder he was. He was extraordinary. Uh, he, 
he, he, what he was able to do with his diet and his exercise and his intention, um, he became a world champion at that. And when he became the, uh, uh, the guy in the movies with, with a, uh, a machine gun, you know, tearing everybody apart, I said, nah, doesn't belong on my list. And I took him off. That's fine. You know, and it wasn't about judging him for his path. He has a perfect right to do that. It just doesn't hold the standard of being a model in my life. Okay, we need to we need to shut this down for right now. So, Stephen. Can you tell us a little bit about your class on Saturday? Sure, sure, I can do that. Uh, we're going to have a membership class in this room on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, my intention is to be complete by noon. Uh, in that class, uh, we do not have conversations about the details of this center. We talk about what it means to be in a spiritual community. And we share ideas on how to communicate, how to relate to others in the community, how to see yourself in the community. And we believe that people that have that level of understanding make Fabulous members here. And then on Sunday, we'll welcome those who choose to be members into membership. So if there is anyone here that would like to uh, uh, become a member that hasn't already given me a card, if you have given me a card, I'll be calling you and just checking in with you before, uh, uh, before Saturday to make sure that you ha have what you need. And uh, uh, so I, we would welcome anyone that would like to, jo to join in that class. If you're already a member... Uh, and you'd like to come to the class, you're welcome to come too. That's fine. It's always good to have some experience of what people have gotten out of being here uh, to share with those who are choosing to be members here. So is that about what you're looking for, Stephen? Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, and there are membership cards on the uh, Welcome Center. And they're white. <laughs> yes, they're white. The people who are here for the first time, those cards are blue. Okay, good deal. So how's everybody feeling about this process? We doing some work here? Good, good. Yay, thank you. All right, let's, let's do what we do. This center does not survive on my good looks. It does through the prosperous and, and generous giving of those who believe in what we do. That includes all of you. It includes others as well. There's quite a mix of people that support this center. Here's an interesting fact you probably don't know. The, the largest financial supporter of this center has never stepped in this building. And she gets so much from it, she sends us a lot of money. How's it working for you? And she's very, very abundant and prosperous in her life. And she claims it's because she listens to what we teach. So thank you for holding whatever you have to give tonight. Thank you for supporting the center. And what I know is that as we do uh, the passing of these baskets, uh, only good flows through the hands and the wallets and the hearts and the minds of those who are here. That each one leaves this place richer than when they came clearer than when they came, and more completely on their road of prosperous living than they were before. And in the same way, they support this place. The brick and mortar of it all, the lights, the air conditioning, the requirements to maintain these facilities, and the employees that work here. And in so doing, we have this symbiotic relationship that allows the spirit of all that is to shine brightly all through this center. And in that, it's all good because it's all God. And so it is. So it is. Touch the basket. There you go. Thank you.
So those of you that are in the room tonight received a gift, a gift uh, from Edwin Gaines uh, called Prosperity Plus, one of her classics. Uh, I hope you can find a CD player to enjoy it. There's some powerful <laughs> stuff on there. So do that if you can. And um, thank you for your uh, indulgence tonight of ex this experience of working with me on this and helping build us all into a clearer, happier, more joyous, more prosperous, more loving way to be in the world. I love you all. And so it is. Yeah,